And just remember, every time you try something new, um, you're adding to your, your toolkit. You're adding to uh, your knowledge of mixed media and your, your confidence in how to manipulate the materials um, and combine the materials. So don't be afraid to try something a little different, um, even if you haven't done it before. Remember too, when you do an image transfer that it will transfer in the reverse. So if you need to flip your um, images, you can do that on the computer. Um, so consider that too. With a piece like this, I do tend to work, like I said, intuitively, but I also do um, start with my main piece, my main kind of focal points, and then I'll, you know, build from there, just so I have that, those things kind of anchored, and then I can keep going. Washi tape, this reminds me of washi tape, is a great thing to use um, in this kind of a process too. I am intentionally leaving this area open a little bit because I know I am going to be adding this quote in there somehow, whether I paste it in um, or not, we'll see. I'll probably use a different color since the black is so harsh. Um, so I can print that out from my computer and change that up. You can see though, because I have a color palette already figured out um, that this kind of all starts to work. I'm gonna put some matte medium over some of these collaged elements to protect them because I think I might start layering a few transfers. Anytime you use a vintage um, letter that's been written like this in ink, it might smear. Um, I don't mind that. I think it's kind of beautiful. Um, so just keep that in mind. this butterfly in there and see if I can transfer it. I'm not willing to put it on this side. So I'm just gently burnishing it now. See if I can peel up a little bit of this paper. Nope, it's really stuck down. So now I'm just going to do that same process of wetting the back. The other cool thing about an image transfer is that it'll allow um, whatever is underneath it to show. So it, it ends up having that transparency that can be really beautiful and giving you that layered look. Okay guys, so I have been rubbing at this little butterfly for a while now. And I think I've taken it mm, probably as far as I can take it without uh, ruining his wings. So I'm gonna go ahead and he's dry now. And um, see the edges are just very fragile. So I'm gonna go ahead and just coat him in some matte medium. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna do any more collage right now. I think I'm gonna move to paint and I'm gonna start to, um, I'm gonna start to lay in some colors some, with some watercolors uh, and see how I feel about that. So I have already put out some of the colors that I wanted to use in my little watercolor palette here. And you guys obviously use the colors that you love. 
um, but I'll just let you know what the colors are that I have on here. I've got the Senlier uh, Payne's Gray, I've got the Senlier Neutral Tints, I've got Windsor & Newton Olive Green, uh, the Senlier Gray, the Senlier Warm Gray. Um, this is the Azteca Pink, so that's actually um, an acrylic, not a watercolor. And then this was a mixture of the Azteca Pink and the Senlier Alizarin. And then this is a mix of the Senlier Thalo Turquoise and the Senlier Payne's Gray for this color. So, since I've already got them, got them down here, um, I am going to just kind of start to play. Um, this is mixed media paper, so it should take the watercolor quite well. And again, this is just building up layers. I don't really have um, an agenda here. I'm just going to play around. I think I'm going to start with a little bit of the turquoise mixed with the Payne's Gray. And if you guys are wondering where I got this um, cool uh, palette, I, I got it at an antique fair, so I have no idea. I think it's from like those places where you go and paint like um, pottery, I'm not sure, but it's, or it's vintage, I'm not really sure, but it wasn't an antique fair, I have no idea where it came from. Um, so yeah, I wish I could give you more info, because I do really love it. Now the watercolor is going to react, you know, differently in different areas depending on what's underneath and what's going on. Um, but again, this is just, you know, just sort of playing. Adding some color in and seeing what happens. And this will probably look a little crazy at first. But I, it's just sort of like the collage. It's just, you're just giving yourself things to work with. Because if you don't have anything down, you have nothing, you have nothing to play with. Um, so don't, don't get too hung up in this area or this section of the piece or the spread. This is the neutral tint, I think, yeah. I'll put down some cool tones first, I think. The goal here is just to basically get some color onto your paper. Play around with mark making. I'm going to move into, let's see, go do some gray. Tell him not overthinking this at all. I also don't like to be too controlled at this stage because a lot of times beautiful things can happen when you're not trying so hard. 
Um, you can get cool effects. You can get um, subtlety that you may not have gotten if you had been really planning out each stroke. And I'm going to go back in with thicker paints, uh, my acrylic paints, and paint out some of this. So it's not going to be a big old mess like this. It's going to, it will become cohesive eventually. But I'm putting on some veils of color. I'm just really loosening up actually. But again, because we have that color palette, we know that um, these colors are going to work together. I am definitely moving the color around, so I'm not, you know, only putting it in one place. Let's see if I can get some, a few speckles. Take a little bit of that alizarin crimson and a little bit of that Pink. I'm going to go ahead and just put this pink right here on the palette and just to soften it a little bit. Otherwise, it's just a little too, too red. I might need a little white too. That's not the white. Bring some of that pink in now. We emphasizing our butterfly up here. I'll often use my hands and smear things around. That's pretty common for me. I might make this side a little bit darker because it's the parts that we're letting go. The darker parts, the shadow parts of ourselves. All right, so I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back probably with some acrylic paints and start to do some more painting. Hey everybody, okay, so I am back and um, this is all dried and it's bending a little bit, but that's okay. Once I finish, I'll be able to flatten it out. So I think the next thing I'm gonna do is start to work on kind of altering these girls a little bit. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use some absorbent ground. This is a golden product, obviously, and it's kind of, um, it's a little bit transparent, but not totally. So uh, semi-transparent, I guess you could say. And I did a little experimenting on covering a girl with it and then adding watercolors over the top. And I thought it was kind of fun because I do wanna alter her a little bit and make her more, uh, less of a magazine cutout and more of something different. So I'm going to take just um, a dry brush here and I'm going to do a very thin amount over her. So I don't want to lose her entirely, but I am trying to like kind of knock her back. And the absorbent ground is going to 
kind of give me, oh, I've got a little bit of watercolor right there. Uh, it's going to give me sort of a nice texture to go back over with the watercolors. Obviously it's absorbent, so hopefully they'll bleed a little bit and look kind of cool. So let me just get this dot off of her. So I still want to see her face, but I um, just want her to be a little bit less. I want to kind of integrate her a little bit more into the painting or the, the spread here. And you certainly, you know, if you really like how your girl's looking or whatever you transferred, you don't have to do this step. I just think, you know, I feel like when you're using um, your art journal, it's such a great time to experiment and try some things that maybe you wouldn't usually. And so that's kind of my goal. So now you can kind of see she's kind of ghosted out a little bit. And I might do the same over here with this girl since I do have this product out right now. Now it will dry a little bit more um, transparent, but not not much. This is a bit of a risk, but I like this whole kind of veiling effect. You can see I'm just using a little bit of this product, this medium. Once you put matte medium on stuff, it, um, it kind of gets, it's not super, it's not absorbent anymore. It's almost like a layer of um, plastic. So if you want to come back in over matte medium with watercolor you can but you're not going to get the same kind of you know watery effects quite quite as well so i'm going to dry these so now i think i'm going to take my watercolor brush here if you guys should see my desk it's like a total disaster um, but that's just what happens when I start art journaling. I don't know about you guys, but it just gets crazy. And again, I'm just sort of playing. I don't have huge agenda with this girl. I just knew I wanted to make her a little softer. get a little bit too um, intense with your colors you can always reactivate them that's the beauty of watercolors okay 
so what I'm seeing here is that I like how she kind of looks quite ghost-like. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and knock back the butterfly just a little bit with the same, uh, same medium. Activating that. Just wanna knock it back a little bit. I really like the feel of it too. It feels almost like paper or something. It's kind of cool. All It will reactivate some of the watercolor, so just be aware of that if you choose to use really any water-soluble sort of medium over the top of the watercolor, it will activate it. All right, so I'm gonna go back over to this girl and kind of do a little bit of the same thing, add in a little bit of tone. Um, I'm gonna let that dry. I'll probably go back in with some pencil work. So I'm just adding in really soft tone, but I'm actually dragging down some of the watercolor so it almost looks like there's tears or there's kind of color running from her eyes. Because remember, this is going to be the letting go side of the piece. So I want it to be a little bit moodier. Now I'm going to go in with my titanium white. some high light points on her face. And this is getting pretty, um, it's more expressive now. It's a little more moody. It's not a magazine cutout so much anymore. Not that there's anything wrong with a magazine cutout, but I wanted there to be a little bit more mood. Well, of course, the high points of the face would be the forehead and the, um, the cheekbone, a little bit on the brow bone. Because of this is the letting, or the, because this is the holding on side, 
I might want to have more light on her. I'm gonna leave this side alone for right now. Well, no, I'm not. I'm gonna take a mechanical pencil and kind of draw a little bit into her. So I'm just kind of adding in some hair-like strands. Um, I'm very much working intuitively now, um, so I don't know what my next move is going to be. Uh, just kind of rolling with it, seeing what's going to happen. She looks like a mermaid now. But I love mermaids, so that's okay. <laughs> 